Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss wearing classic hat styles as a modern man and how to do so confidently and stylishly. <laughs> Long-time viewers are sure to know that we're no strangers to classic hat styles on this channel. We've done previous videos on different hat styles, how to select a hat, hat-wearing etiquette, and more. You can find our full hats playlist here. Today's video is the first of a two-parter on hats. The second part will cover the surprisingly easy and simple process of reshaping a felt hat at home. While hats were once a requirement for any man in a public setting, societal changes through the 20th and into the 21st century have now made hats entirely optional in all but the most niche of settings. Many attribute the decline in hat wearing, particularly in the U.S., to the presidency of John F. Kennedy, a man who was known for his good looks, including his hair. The story goes that when JFK went hatless to his presidential inauguration in 1961, sales of hats across the country dropped precipitously. While this story has been repeated in print and elsewhere many times, the fact of the matter is, it actually isn't true. In fact, JFK actually revived a hat-wearing tradition at the inauguration. While President Harry Truman, a former haberdasher himself, wore the customary top hat to his inauguration in 1949, his successor Dwight D. Eisenhower chose to wear the slightly less formal Homburg to his inauguration in 1953. When he did so, Truman also wore a Homburg that day as a show of good faith. JFK did have a top hat at his inauguration, and that was well covered. It just so happened that in order for reporters and cameras to see his face better during the inaugural speech itself, he wasn't wearing the hat at that time. So when did the cultural shift against hats begin then? It can probably be traced to the end of World War II. When returning servicemen were so sick of wearing things on their heads, like helmets or their uniform headwear, that they stopped wearing hats more and more in civilian life as well. Whatever the historical case for the decline in hats may be, we've begun to see a bit of a hat renaissance in the last 15 years or so. This can probably be attributed in part to stylish television shows like Mad Men and Boardwalk Empire, where hats are depicted regularly, and more and more modern men are again starting to see the virtues that a classic hat can provide. But if you've never worn a traditionally styled hat before, you may be worried that if you try to wear one now, you'd look silly, unconfident, or out of place. We're happy to report, though, that this doesn't have to be the case. So, if you're looking to transition more often from ball caps and beanies to more classically styled hats, we've got seven tips today on how you can do so effectively. Tip number one is to find a hat style that complements your face shape. Not all hats are created equal, of course, and as we've said, there are many different styles. So you'll likely want to try on many different shapes and sizes of hat to see which one harmonizes best with your natural proportions. Since a hat naturally sits so close to your face, it will draw the eyes almost immediately. Therefore, finding a hat that works well with your face shape is definitely important. We won't spend too much time on this point today, since we've made an entirely separate video about finding the right hat for your face shape, which you can find here. And of course, be sure to learn your hat size as well. This is especially important if you'd like to wear a stiffer hat style, like a Homburg, Bowler, or Straw Boater. These hats aren't going to stretch and conform to the shape of your head as much, like flat caps and some fedoras will. Our second tip is to make sure that your chosen hat complements your skin tone. Once you've found a style, or indeed styles, of hat that you would like to purchase, the next big consideration is probably going to be what colors you want to get. When contemplating color, one important consideration is to choose a hue that harmonizes well with your skin tone. Since the hat is again closer to your face than some of the other elements of your outfit, this isn't an insignificant concern. 
For men with pale and or lighter skin tones, darker colors like charcoal and medium gray, dark to medium brown, and navy blue, in other words, the menswear staples, will contrast with your skin and bring warmth and color. For a more adventurous and fashion-forward look, you could try something like burgundy or perhaps dark green. If you've got a more olive skin tone, your slightly warmer complexion will benefit from colors that are either slightly brighter or darker than the middle ground. For example, you could take the mustard brown trilby I'm wearing today, which is a favorite of mine. Lighter grays will work here as well, and the bold can experiment with more different types of colors. And if you've got a darker skin tone, good news here. You can pretty much wear any color you'd like, but try to keep some contrast between your skin color and the color of the hat. That's a brief summary, but for more information about finding garments of all different kinds that work well with your skin tone, you can find our video on that subject here. One shade that we would advise wearing only sparingly, however, is black. It's probably going to wash out a lot of skin tones, and it won't harmonize well with many outfits. Black hats are best worn only with more formal dress codes, like black Homburgs for black tie and black silk top hats for white tie. Even morning dress will often substitute a gray top hat for a black one. By the way, for more information on black tie, white tie, and morning wear dress codes, you can find all of it as part of our comprehensive black tie guide on the website here. After considering your skin tone then, our number three tip is to also keep in mind how the color of the hat you've chosen is going to harmonize with the other colors in your outfit. For example, if your outfit features browns and blues, a brown hat would be a safe bet, while a blue hat could work, but would be perhaps a bit more daring. And if you're wearing an outfit that has many grays, a gray hat is obviously going to work well. Outfits mostly in blue can work equally well with a brown or a gray hat, depending somewhat on the colors of your accessories and leather goods. That is to say, if you're wearing mostly brown leathers, go for a brown hat, and if you're wearing black leathers, go for a gray hat. As a personal example, the two hats in my own collection that I wear most often, at least outside of the summer months, are trilbies in charcoal gray and mustard brown. They pair well with almost any outfit, and they don't overpower it. For more general advice, you can also consult our video on using the color wheel to assemble your outfits here. And in the winter, don't forget to consider how your hat will pair together with your outerwear. Not just your overcoat, but also your gloves and scarves. The techniques for pairing these accessories together well, found in this video, can also be extended to hats. The exception to these points about harmony lies chiefly in the realm of summer hats. Warm weather hat styles, with the partial exception of the straw boater, are generally considered less formal overall and are less of a finishing touch to your outfit as they are a practical accessory, but more on that in a moment. As such, you don't really have to worry if your summer hat is paired quite so exactly to the rest of your outfit, with the possible exception of a straw boater, which again is more formal than other summer hat styles. So in the warmer seasons, have fun and experiment. On the topic of seasons then, our number four tip is to pay attention to the weather. Remember that a hat isn't a purely stylish accessory, it can also serve a direct function. In the summer, or on any sunny day, a traditional hat style with a brim can help to keep the sun out of your eyes. Hats can also keep your head from getting wet in the rain when you've forgotten your umbrella, though we wouldn't really recommend getting them soaked, and they can also help keep snow off in the winter. Also, whether it's a straw hat in spring or summer, or a felt hat in fall or winter, hats can work to regulate your body temperature, keeping your head cool or warm as desired. With that said then, keep in mind that certain materials look best and perform best in certain seasons. Felt and other wool hat styles are the safest choice for autumn and winter, where they can also be supplemented with ear warmers in the latter case, and they can also work on cooler days in the spring. Meanwhile, straw hats are best worn exclusively in summer, though they can be worn on warmer and sunnier days in the spring. 
These aren't absolute rules, of course, just general guidelines to keep in mind. Our number five tip is to be mindful of the overall formality of the outfit you're wearing. Certain hat styles are also more formal than others and thus can affect your outfit accordingly. Generally speaking, then, the stiffer a hat style is, the more formal it is. The prime example of this would be the top hat, which is a quite stiff hat sized specifically to one's head using a specific machine and is also worn with only the most formal of dress codes, white tie and morning dress. Down one step in both stiffness and formality would be the Homburg, worn with black tie and stroller suits, the Bowler or Derby, also worn with strollers and suits, and the Straw Boater, worn with warm weather black tie and formal summer looks. Next would be fedoras, trilbies, and pork pie hats, good for business attire and some smart casual outfits, followed by flat caps and panel caps, which are good for smart casual and casual looks, especially in the fall. There are, of course, many other hat styles that we didn't mention here. But in general, remember that stiffness of a hat can be used as an indicator of its formality and make sure that the hat is similarly formal to the rest of the outfit you're wearing. For more information about the formality of different outfits, you can check out our video on the formality scale here. Our number six tip today is to be mindful of hat etiquette. This is another point that we won't spend a great deal of time on today, as it also has its own video on the channel. But suffice it to say, if you're confident in your knowledge of traditional hat etiquette, which should still be observed, at least to some degree, when wearing traditional hat styles, then you'll be that much more confident with the hat in the ensemble. As a general rule, your hat should be on in public spaces and off in private spaces. But be sure to watch the video as there's a lot more nuance than that. Those are our most specific considerations covered. Before we move on to some more general styling tips, however, here's a brief word on hat hair, should that be of any concern to you. One of the upsides of maintaining a traditional hairstyle, as Raphael and I do, or an otherwise close-cropped style, like Kyle does, is that you won't have to worry about a traditional style of hat mussing up your hair. So long as you put on and take off your hat properly, using two hands, your hair should never need more than a quick touch-up and often won't be disturbed at all. In fact, I sometimes use a battered old trilby, which I refer to as my hair hat, to hold things in place in the middle of styling. Traditional hats can work with more modern, which is to say longer, hairstyles, but the hair will likely have to be swept out of the face or otherwise held back. So for a video on traditional hairstyles to consider, go here. Finally today, serving as our number seven tip are some general style pointers. Hopefully all of our preceding points have been building your confidence. If you're still a little bit wary, try to keep all of them in mind and also consider wearing a more minimalistic look overall. That is to say, think about keeping the rest of your accessories and outfit details pretty basic. Especially for a new hat wearer, a hat can carry some weight, both because you might field some comments and compliments from others, and because you might feel a bit self-conscious, which will be communicated in the way you carry yourself. Going with a simpler look, using staple colors, neutrals, and maybe even a monochromatic feel will free up your mental energies to make sure that your hat looks good and you're following the other considerations we outlined today. Overall, just remember the old saying that you should wear the hat, the hat shouldn't wear you. Finally today, here's a piece of good news. While the evidence isn't exactly scientific, history and aesthetics tell us that wearing a hat can actually make you more confident. Because a hat will often make you look taller, it can therefore send a subconscious signal of increased strength or power. This is evidenced by the fact that many police and military dress uniforms often feature a hat, as did many other types of uniforms in past centuries. 
So let this confidence spur you on to more hat wearing, combine it with all of the tips that we laid out today, and you'll be well on your way to making classic hats a staple of your wardrobe. In today's video, I'm wearing an outfit centered around a blue and brown color scheme that's quite obviously topped off with a hat. The hat, of course, is the mustard brown trilby I mentioned previously, and I think that its relatively narrow brim makes it work well with my face shape, and its color works well with my skin tone. It also pairs well with many of the other elements in my outfit, including my vintage camel hair sport coat, whose football buttons are showing a bit of wear. My French cuffed shirt features a blue ground with relatively narrow white stripes. My trousers are in a plain blue color that's a bit more bold than a traditional navy. And my shoes are brogued wingtip darbies that interestingly feature no medallion on the toe. My belt features a silver buckle, and the shade of its brown leather also harmonizes well with my shoes. The rest of my wardrobe elements today are from Fort Belvedere. We can start here with my socks, which are in two-tone shadow stripes of navy blue and royal blue. My tie is in a two-tone knit silk in tones of blue and brown to harmonize with various pieces around my outfit. My silk pocket square is in a color we're calling copper red, and it features an art deco Egyptian scarab pattern in royal blue, teal, and yellow, and also features a blue contrast edge. My light blue Veronica Persica boutonniere provides a subtle element, but still keeps things lively on my lapel, and my cufflinks are our platinum plated sterling silver eagle claw models featuring blue lapis lazuli as the stone. The blue, of course, harmonizes with various elements, and the platinum-plated sterling silver goes well with the color of my belt buckle. You can find all of the Fort Belvedere accessories I'm wearing in today's video in the Fort Belvedere shop here.